Scientists. My name is Dr. Takesha bolden Gastel, and I'm a Science Teacher Development Specialist here in HISD. Today, we're going to learn about characteristics of organisms. As you remember last week, you learned how to classify things and objects into similarities and differences of their characteristics. Also, you learned about scientists, and as scientists, we like to group all living things. And today, we're going to look at that a little bit deeper. But if you can remember on last week, you talked about that word that branches is at the top branch, which is called domain, yes. And under domain, there are three words that you learned about. Yes, eukarya, eubacteria, and archaea. Very good. And underneath the domain, we have our kingdoms, which we're gonna dive deeper into that for today's lesson. But first, we're gonna watch a video. So I want you to take out those science interactive notebooks and you're gonna jot down two questions because these two questions you're gonna answer while watching the video. The first question, what are the six kingdoms? What are the six kingdoms? The second question is, what are some examples of each kingdom? I'm gonna give you two seconds to write that down. Okay, so now we're gonna watch our video and remember our questions when you're watching the video. Still trying to get Hector to fetch? Good luck with that. Dear Tim and Moby, what can you tell me about the six kingdoms of life? From Becky. Scientists like to organize everything. Categorizing things helps them understand what they're studying. But what they learn often leads them to revise their categories. This cycle has been going on for a long time. In biology, you can trace it back to Aristotle, one of the early Greek philosophers. He divided all life into two main categories, plants and animals. The animal kingdom was further divided based on things like physical traits and habitat. That system held up for more than 2,000 years. But scientists slowly learned that physical similarities can be misleading. So, in the 20th century, they began to group organisms by phylogeny. Phylogeny is how organisms are related through evolution. For instance, Aristotle would have categorized whales close to tuna, since they both live in the sea and have similar shapes. But with what we now know about genetics and evolution, it's clear that whales are closer to giraffes than they are to tuna. Using phylogeny as a guide, biologists divided life into three domains, eukarya, bacteria, and archaea. And those domains were divided into six kingdoms, animals, plants, fungi, protists, eubacteria, and archibacteria. Let's talk about eubacteria. They come in many shapes, including spheres, rods, and spirals. Yeah, when you hear bacteria, you think of all those germs that can make you ill. Eubacteria actually means true bacteria, but most aren't pathogenic, the kind that can make you sick. Eubacteria are everywhere. You can find them in the air, the water, even inside other living things. In fact, some help us by breaking down food in our intestines. All eubacteria are prokaryotic, meaning they have no nucleus. The only other prokaryotic kingdom is the archibacteria. Archibacteria actually means ancient bacteria. They are some of the oldest forms of life on Earth, but people didn't know about them until the 1970s. Many of them have a strikingly different genetic makeup from other living things. The atmosphere of the early Earth was hostile and poisonous. Archibacteria were able to survive it and are known for thriving in extreme environments like deep sea trenches and hot springs. Like eubacteria and archibacteria, most protists are single-celled creatures that are too small to see. The difference is that their cells have a nucleus. Protists are divided up by how they get food. 
animal-like protists, such as amoebas, capture food to eat. Plant-like protists, like plankton, use sunlight to make food. And some do both. No, Moby. Mushrooms belong to the fungi kingdom. Fungi live by sucking up nutrients made by other organisms. They're often found on dead plants and animals, breaking down the remains. Most fungi attach themselves to their food with clumps of tiny threads called hyphae. Then there's the plant kingdom. Unlike fungi, plants make their own food through photosynthesis. That's the conversion of sunlight and carbon dioxide into food. Plants include trees and flowers, the weeds in your yard, and the moss that grows on rocks. Plant cells have rigid walls made of a substance called cellulose. We belong to the animal kingdom. Well, I do anyway. Animals are multi-celled organisms that eat food to survive. Lizards, bugs, birds, and bears are all animals too. Animals tend to move around, although some, like coral, are sessile. They stay in one place. Earth's variety of living things, or biodiversity, is pretty tremendous. As scientists learn more about it, they're changing the way they categorize life again. Like, to account for recent discoveries about the enormous diversity of protists. The Six Kingdom system has been useful, but it's due for an update. Oh, Hector? Yeah, I, I guess he's an animal. Please teach him not to do that anymore. Okay, so now we just got through watching our video and we're going to look at the first question. The first question says, what are the six kingdoms? So if you can see, I've made a chart, which you can make as well. Our first one, Animalia, Plantae, Arc Bacteria, Eubacteria, we have Fungi, and we have Protista. So those are our six kingdoms that we discussed and you saw in the video. Now the second question that asks what are some examples of each kingdom, we're going to dive into a card sort and I know that you took good notes so we're going to see what kind of examples that we have and compare it to your examples a little bit later. So the first picture in our card sort that I'm going to have you look at is this picture. This is a picture of slime mold. And it belongs to the what family you think it is? Correct, the protista. Do you have another example that you might know of a protista? Yes, amoeba. All right, let's look at our next picture. It's a picture of correct mushrooms. And that is a part of what kingdom? Fungi. Awesome. And another example is mold. What about this picture? It's a picture of, yes, that's correct, a dragonfly. And that's a part of what kingdom? An Amelia. Very good. What's another example of an Animalia? A turtle? Okay. Let's look at our next picture. What do you think that is? It's a plant, correct. It's a tropical pitcher plant. And that's in what kingdom? The plantae. And what's an example of plantae? Blue bonnet. Another example. What about this picture here? Yes, that's correct. It's bacteria. And that's a part of our eubacteria. And our last picture. It's a thermophilus on hot rocks. And that belongs to our archaea bacteria. So now we have identified some examples based on our six kingdoms. So we have our Animalia, Plantae, Arc Bacteria, Eubacteria, Fungi, and Protista. Very good. 
So we've just identified our six kingdoms, but in our kingdoms, we have organisms and we have to determine how are these organisms characterized and classified. So we're gonna look at characteristics of organisms. And so in that, I want you to write this in your notebook. These are the words that we're gonna be using in our notebooks. But this is the actual chart that we're going to create. So in this circle chart, these are the words that you're gonna put. Asexual, sexual, unicellular, multicellular, heterotroph, autotroph, eukaryote, and prokaryote. So I'm gonna give you a few minutes to write these words in a circle chart like that. I'm gonna give you a few. So while you're working, we're gonna get our second card sort ready because you're writing this in your science interactive notebook, like scientists. I know that you first started last week, you learned about two words, prokaryote and eukaryote. So we're gonna start with those two words today first. Our prokaryote, do you remember, does that have a nucleus or no nucleus? Correct, prokaryote lacks a nucleus. So we have two pictures here, a prokaryote and a bacteria that's a prokaryote. And so we're gonna put that in our chart. And we're going to put no nucleus. Okay, and our second word that you remember last week we talked about was our eukaryote. And we have two examples here. We have one that is our animal cell and a plant cell. So we're gonna put that in our chart. And they do have a nucleus, contains a nucleus. Okay, so we're just gonna move right along. We have next is our autotroph. They can make food on their own. So when we talk about food and can they make food, autotrophs can make food on their own. So they make their own food. The next word we're gonna focus on is heterotroph. And we have a cow here, and it does not make its own food. They cannot make their own food. And we're gonna put that here. The next one we're gonna talk about is multicellular. And it's organisms that are made of many cells working together. And our first picture we have is a bicycle, which you know that has a whole, it works together. It has different parts. And then we have a sponge, which is the simplest form of a multicellular organism. So we're gonna put that in our chart. Organism made of many cells. So we're going to put made of many cells. The next one we're focusing on is unicellular, made up only of one cell. And we have a close clostridium, and then we have a pen as our examples. It's made up of one cell, unicellular. The next one is reproduction. That's what we're gonna focus on. And it's sexual reproduction, which they combine by their genetic material from their two parents. 
We have the banana lace bug. And then we have a passion fruit flower. And that is our sexual reproduction that they require genetic information from two parents. And the last characteristic we're going to talk about is asexual, which they make their own copy of genetic information. They make their own copy. And we have a picture of budding in a plant and budding in bacteria. So they re reproduce on their own. Okay, so we just discussed the characteristics of organisms. So we have asexual, sexual, unicellular, multicellular, our heterotrophs, autotrophs, eukaryotes, and prokaryotes. Now, we are going to take and combine it all. We discussed our kingdoms, we discussed our characteristics of our organism, and then we're going to discuss how all four components and identify our characteristics in our kingdoms. So the first one we're going to focus on is our archaea bacteria. So we want to know, does it have a nucleus or it does not? So remember the words that we discussed? As a characteristic, correct, prokaryote and eukaryote. So our archaea bacteria is a prokaryote. Our U bacteria, correct, is a prokaryote. Our protista is both. It can be prokaryote or eukaryote. Fungi, eukaryote. Our plantae is eukaryote. Animalia, eukaryote. So we just described the nucleus or no nucleus, correct? The next thing we're going to look at is the number of cells. And when we talk about cells, we go back to our characteristics here. Either it's multicellular, which is made up of more than one cell. And if it's unicellular, it's made up of one cell. So our archaea bacteria is unicellular. Our U bacteria is also unicellular. Our protista is both. Our fungi is mostly, yes, multicellular. Our plantae is multicellular. And our animalia is multicellular. Now we're thinking about how in the six kingdoms do these organisms obtain the food. If you remember, it's either going to be heterotroph or autotroph. So in our archaea bacteria, it's both. And our U bacteria, it's both. And our protista, it's both. And our fungi, it's mostly heterotroph.
And remember, our autotroph, is they make their food on their own, and our heterotroph, they do not make their food on their own. Plantae, autotroph. And our animalia is heterotroph. Now our last thing that we're going to talk about is reproduction. And remember there's two types. Asexual is where they reproduce on their own and then sexual which needs to, the genetic information from two parents. So archaea bacteria, reproduction is asexual. The eubacteria is also asexual. What about our protista? Yes, it's both. Our fungi is both. Plantae, our plants, it's mostly sexual. Some instances it can be asexual. And animalia is sexual. Okay, so we have completed our chart. Hopefully you are writing our charts in your science interactive notebooks. We discussed our characteristics of our organisms. And then we looked at our six kingdoms and identified the characteristics of each based on our organisms within the kingdoms. So lastly, we're going to use a star question and we're going to answer, answer a question. We're going to tie this all together. You remember our words, our words that we have, our characteristics, asexual, sexual, prokaryote, unicellular, multicellular, heterotroph, autotroph, and eukaryotes. And then our kingdoms, our six kingdoms, animalia, plantae, arc bacteria, eubacteria, fungi, and protista, okay? Our question, which I want you to also write in your interactive notebooks, is which list of characteristics describes organisms classified as animals? So which list of characteristics describes organisms classified as animals. And remember, we talked about the different types of characteristics of organisms. We talked about our six kingdoms and we talked about all of this together. So the first answer choice, you have unicellular, prokaryotic, and autotrophic. You have multicellular, eukaryotic, and heterotrophic. You have unicellular, eukaryotes, and heterotrophic. You have multicellular, eukaryotic, and autotrophic. I'm gonna give you a few minutes to write that down and to think about it. Think about everything that we've discussed today to help you solve this answer. Look back at those charts that we created. Okay, so let's discuss this. In animals, one cell or multiple cells? Correct, there's multiple cells. So we can eliminate the first answer choice and the third answer choice because that says unicellular. Next, it's a eukaryote, right? Which we have a nucleus in animals. But last, the difference between the second and the last answer choice, it says heterotrophic and autotrophic. And what do you remember about the chart that we wrote here about the characteristics? One of the examples, heterotrophs, do they make their own food? Or autotrophs, make their own food? Yes, correct. As animals, we do not make our own food. So the correct answer is the second answer choice. So we have discussed the characteristics of organisms. We looked at the different types of characteristics of organisms. We looked at the kingdoms. We discussed the examples. 
you are ready to go. You have learned you are becoming on, on your way to becoming great scientists. We hope to see you next time. Thank you. Have a great day.